Bye. Short bus debate club. It's a bus. Rolling. I can get on board. <laughs> Hello, I'm Darren Jolly. <laughs> it's time to get this short bus started. So let's roll. And on with the show. Greetings and salutations, you four people that listen to the show. This is Brian Courtney with Short Bus Debate Club. And on this Friday edition, we are going to talk about something joyous and happy once again. We are talking torture. Um, Hopefully it won't feel like it. Yeah, well, I'm going to entitle the show Torture Me All You Want, Just Stop Talking. But... (laughs) <laughs> I really was going to title it that. Um, I love, you love, gotta love it when you laugh at your own jokes harder than anybody else does. Fuck, I'm funny, dude. There's no doubt. Um, so anyway, we're talking torture. Um, torture, you know, everybody thinks is sort of taboo and, and doesn't happen anymore. Um, According to Amnesty International, there is torture going on in 141 countries still on a a regular basis. Um, That's two-thirds of the globe. 141. Yeah. That's a fucking big number, dude. That is a a big, big, big number. Um, So I guess... The way that I, I want to start, and, you know, maybe this isn't the right way, but it, it is going to be the way regardless. <laughs> um, Thanks for making that clear to us all. <laughs> so, probably the most famous form of torture, and everybody knows about it regardless of whether they know it or not, and that's because every fucking third house has one hung on their wall, and probably four out of five dipshits in that house have one hung around their neck, um, is the crucifix. Yeah, the Romans, you know, they uh, hung people up on a cross, and basically, regardless of cutting them and throwing thorns on their head, which is supposedly what happened to Jesus, but they did definitely hang him up there, and so they would starve and dehydrate. Um, All of their joints would fucking dislocate, and depending on whether they hung them with rope or nailed them up there, you know, those those wounds would start to fester and, and also get, you know, wider and wider. So... When with, they were hanging them with rope, I mean, were they... Was the were they just keeping up there a certain amount of time, or were they just? I mean, I mean, of course, it wasn't always going to be the same, but like, if you want to kill a motherfucker, you know, it seems like the the nails would be. Well, I don't think that they really did want to kill them. It was torture. I mean, they wanted them to uh, suffer while they died. I mean, visibly, so that everybody could see it. It was meant to be slow and, you know, excruciating. Um, Not to mention the fact that. And and this is kind of a winner with a couple of other methods of torture. Um, You know, when you're hanging on that cross, bugs start to eat you and shit. Um, You know, the elements get you because it's either hot or cold, depending on where the Romans got you. Um, Yeah, ultimately exposure is going to kill them more times than... Not. Right, but just imagine being hung up there where your wrist and shoulders are fucking dislocated for you can't you can't you, I, you can't imagine that you know it, I mean it's got to be horrible you're gonna go into this space where you're like in a fucking nightmare like weird dream state you know it's like oh yeah blah so and and here I don't know if. Uh, Maybe I don't want to draw this conclusion. Um, so that was a good way to start a statement. <laughs> the Roman Catholics were the ones, or not the Roman Catholics, the Romans were doing the crucifix. Yeah, they, um, had, they hadn't been Catholics quite yet. That that whole crucifixion kind of thing was pretty important for the. But the Roman Catholics continued with torture. Um, the church. We're big believers in torture. 
Um, they did lots of neat things like thumb screws. Um, they really had an appreciation for fucking with people's genitals. Oh yeah. Did you see the, you see anything on the choke pair? Well, not the choke pair, the pair of anguish, you mean? Well, that they, I mean, they could, that's, it's the same, you know, where they're putting it in an orifice and then they... Yeah, they so up. they said that the really good part is if they put it in your mouth, because then your skull explodes and you die. But more often than not, they would put it up your ass or vagina, into your yeah, vagina yeah. and, you know, let you suffer again. Um but along those same lines of the the genital mutilation and torture, there was something called the Judas Cradle, which basically there's a pyramid sitting below where the person is hung, and then they're lowered onto the top of that pyramid, and if if the weight and gravity doesn't do the trick, they start throwing weights and shit on your feet to where it drags you down and, and eventually splits you open. And a different kind of tearing you a new asshole. Right. That's the same thing as the or a very similar thing to the Spanish donkey. Except the Spanish donkey was instead of a pyramid, it was a like a triangle type board that you know, was basically like a sawhorse type thing, mm -hmm. except it came to a point at the top and then they put weights and shit on your feet. Mm -hmm. Um, another thing like they just love tearing women up. I don't understand that there was something called crocodile shears, which were these big fucking scissors that had teeth about an inch long. So it kind of looked similar to a crocodile. Mm -hmm. And apparently they would put it on, a girl's tit and just start tearing her tit off um, or breast. You I know, apologize. It, it's it's interesting when you like <clears throat> the so like the difference between torture today is that torture today it, there's not really generally speaking like a public concept of it. You know you don't do, you don't you, you do it in a hiding place. You know you do it in supermax. You do it in you know some Syrian prison or some shit like that. We don't really like back you know like the you mean back when they used to make it an uh, an event? Yeah, like Braveheart. You know, like that's every everybody's seen Braveheart. Everybody fucking remembers that. And I mean, uh, you know, you if you if you you know ask for forgiveness and you know swear your fealty to the king, then this can end quickly. And then he refused to. So they were making you know this is the consequences of activism. If you try to do a revolt against the crown, then we are going to remove your genitals from your body and rip your fucking intestines out and start playing with them like they're fucking cookie dough or some shit like that. Well, I think to some degree they still make it kind of public depending on where you are. Um, and the reason I say this is because the Philippines has something called the wheel of torture. And the wheel of torture. torture. Um, but you spin it and whatever it lands on, you know, you get tortured. So there's one on this wheel that was pictured um, where you're hung upside down like a bat for 30 seconds. There's one called the Manny, and that's where they beat the shit out of you like Manny Pacquiao for 30 seconds. Again, while you're hung from the ceiling. There's one called Three Minute zombies which i don't know what the fuck that would be hmm. um and then there's a 30 second duck walk uh, what the fuck is that i i don't know for sure i just remember a duck walk in like gym um like in elementary school and if they do that in a similar fashion then i bet you they tie in it's just a stress position somehow but it's got to be worse than that because it's only 30 seconds. So, I mean, there are some in instances where it's public. I mean, like, there's like Saudi, you know, I've heard about things in Saudi Arabia. I've heard about things in Iran where they do things publicly. Um, but still, like, and maybe it's just because I'm sheltered and I live in the, you know, United States. It just doesn't seem like it. Now, like in Mexico, if you piss the fucking gangs off and shit like that, they'll they'll do, you know. And they do things symbolically to, to demonstrate, you know, 
cutting the tongue yeah. off. And throwing you over a bridge or throwing your headless body over a bridge. Yeah. Um, well, and you know what's interesting is that even though it's kind of hitting hidden, um, Amnesty International found that over a hundred companies are still selling torture implements. And when I say that, I'm not talking about like an Iron Maiden or a fucking Spanish donkey or anything like that, but um, spike batons, electric shock vests, thumb cuffs, leg irons, shit like that. So over a com- hundred companies globally are still selling this shit publicly. So, I mean, it's it's hidden. They don't make an event out of it, but it's not hidden. Yeah, and you're right. There's a political economy of fucking torture devices and shit. Now, the non-lethal stuff, you know, and then the stuff that, like, you know, depending on what kind of an outcome you're looking for. Well, and in Mexico, you know, one of their favorite things to do, they don't even have to spend a lot of money. They'll either, they'll shoot carbonated water up somebody's nose, um, and sometimes they add, like, chili pepper to it, which the chili pepper shit, I think, would burn, like, really bad, but... I don't know. That seems like a fairly light method of torture compared to some of the other shit on my list. You know, water up the nose. Yeah. Regardless whether it has fucking chili in it or not. I'm going to have to look into this later, but I found in 2018, there was a a serial killer called the duck walk murderer. I'm going to have to go down that. Another one that I found interesting from back in the day, two, two, two actually that I found interesting from back in the day. And look, I know that we're talking about this as if we're like exciting, excited about it. No, we're not. We're, we're talking about it because we're looking at it. We're learning about it. When he just says that there's a political economy for torture, then that, or, you know, he, he describes it and then I name it. We're, we're trying to make a point that there, there's something that maybe some people think that we're like, you know, evolved like rational beings, but when it comes down to it, you know, we're still very Hobbesian in the way that we're cruel and brutish and short. We do some pretty nasty Fucking A. I mean, the CIA, all they did was change the name of it from torture to enhanced interrogation <laughs> techniques, dude. I still think that sounds like a good problem. No, we're not torturing people. We're enhancing their interrogation, you dumb fucker. But these these two weird ones, other ones that I that I heard uh one was called keel hauling, where they they wrap, so they throw it's for sailors, right? And they wrap uh, this rope around the back, like underneath the boat, and you're you're getting dragged and you're getting smacked back and forth, and you either drown or you fucking get torn apart by the barnacles because those barnacles on the bottom of those boats were nasty. Wow, barnacles. that's clever. I mean, that, we're really having some some fun thoughts. That is pretty clever. But this other one. Um, Ling Chi, uh, death by a thousand cuts. They start with the, the little ones and they increasingly get bigger until they get to the point where they're removing your limbs and shit like that. But and that's old, old, old. But that is old. And that's, you know, it's really kind of cool how much they knew about the body way back then to where they could do that and not hit a major artery or veins. Mm-hmm. To where you would fucking bleed out and you would just suffer. Because another one is the iron chair, which is similar. They're just spikes that are maybe, you know, a quarter of an inch, if that, Mm -hmm. all over this chair. And you have to sit in it. So your legs, your arms, your entire back, everything has these fucking spikes in it. But it doesn't kill you until maybe you stand up. Um, because those spikes, the way that they were built Mm -hmm. also kind of plug the hole. So keeping yourself from bleeding out at that point in time, right. You're going to be bleeding from a thousand cuts. Yeah. They're fucking crazy, dude. And so this, this one I think would be the worst of all. Well, maybe not because there were some of them with rats that kind of bothered me. Yeah, dude, the rat shit is nasty. But there was this one called the tub. And basically what they would do is take an old wash tub and there were um, ankle locks down in the bottom of the tub. And there was a, a pole running up the back so that they could handcuff you to it. 
Um, and they would just leave you in that tub sitting there. Um, and again, you know, bugs would start coming and eating you. And then they would leave you j- there in your own shit and piss. And so the way they described it was that flies would come in and eventually maggots would end up inside all of your little fucking wounds yeah, from the. So, dude, I I don't think I could dig that. Well, you, you know, you like you think about like how long. Oh yeah, they smeared you with honey first. That way, the bugs would come and oh. come and start eating you. Bugs and a- small you know, animals, tracking. whatever. Um, you think about like like Prometheus, right? I mean, like the concept of uh, you know, and they talk about all kinds of stuff with the Aztecs and the Mayans, where they they do these sacrifices that were fucking brutal that had to kind of resemble torture on some level or another. But it is really incredible how like how much these acts have sort of been present so much that like you have Prometheus, where it's like him him getting you know stealing the fire, and then Zeus tacking on the fucking mountains so that he gets pecked at by fucking crows for the rest of eternity i mean that was like you know that was a big a one lesson. too but i mean just it was it was put into the mythology of the time leave you in the open so that birds and shit fucking come after you mm-hmm. did you see the brazen bull did you see anything like that? that is fucking nasty dude i i think that one would bother me too just being cooked alive and you got it yeah you go in there i mean it's so funny like uh not again, not funny, ha ha, but like, what is the efficacy of, of torture? I mean, what you, you're trying to get information from a person at but some it, point, and they're just gonna they're just gonna you, lie, what you, what right? You hear. I'm a witch, yeah. or I'm a spy, yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, just so you guys know what we're talking about, the brazen bull is a big fucking brass bull. Think about the Trojan horse, except brass and a bull. Well, they leave these big nostrils so that oxygen would feed the fire. Mm -hmm. They get you up into the belly of this bull, close and lock the door, and then light a fire underneath it. Um, So I don't know. Maybe there were smaller bulls for only one person and bigger bulls for families. I don't know. Um, But it was – they did some fucked up shit. There was another one I heard of where – they put you in a fucking canvas bag with a bunch of rats and throw you in the water after they, you know, had put cuts and shit on you, which I don't know exactly what that would do, but I'm guessing those rats trying not to drown, like scratch and shit. And what's the, and of course the other one with the rat where they heat up. Yeah. They heat it. So they just trying to escape and then they dig into your guts and shit like Well, that. that one was on game of Thrones. And I think that there was some, reality built into that one but i didn't see that one in all of the research that i did I, I oh did you yeah. okay good then yeah. yeah i don't think it was uh i think there was a, because that's a simple one i mean you get that heat going and then that that's a f- happens. fucked up one dude so present day i mean we got we got the you know the un charter and the declaration of human rights you know from 47 or whatever uh all these people sign on to it, you know, to try to make it look good. But like, how do you, in a world where we should be smart enough to realize that torture, tortures, and I don't like ethical arguments. I fucking hate them. Like that's my, the Marxist in me sort of like, like not saying that I don't think that you should have morals and ethics, but I just don't think that like telling a person you ought not do that is going to be a very persuasive thing. If they're just trying to maintain power, they don't give a fuck what's right or wrong. They give a fuck what serves their needs when they're trying to, uh, maintain their position of dominance, right? So, like, I when I listen to some of the stuff on YouTube, like, they'd have this guy talking from Amnesty International or having somebody talking from the UN, you know, like the rapporteur, you know, the guy that, that's, like, one of the head honchos that's uh, going around investigating it. Or the Red Cross or yeah, whatever. Yeah, and they, they make, they always make these declarative uh, moral claims that these are things that shouldn't be, but there's no, like, the UN, it has no legal grounds. There is no legal grounds, you know, for any anything to stop any of this stuff from happening. That's true. I just think that there is probably a human component. And again, I don't want to go back to, you know, how I would want to be treated or whatever. But, I mean, some of these things are just flat fucked up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, making 
somebody stand up in a fucking sweat box for three weeks or a month. Um, ripping off fingernails with fucking pliers and shit. Bamboo shoots underneath the nails. fucking fingernails. Um, you know, what I, I did find interesting is that if you go all the way back to the crucifixion and all of these fucked up devices that we're talking about, um, heat, cold, and like cutting have always been involved and, and, and water drowning. Mm -hmm. They've all just sort of recycled and, and maybe evolved to some degree because like waterboarding, which again, not torture, enhanced interrogation <laughs> technique. Um, that was a fucking something that the, the Dutch were doing in the East Indies in the 17th century, but they called it the water cure. Um, explain it a little bit, waterboarding. So waterboarding is where they strap you to a board face up, Right. And I would imagine that there are different ways to do it, but mostly there's a board and you're strapped to it. They throw a cloth over your face and then pour water on it. And that way it simulates that you're drowning. So your brain starts saying, fuck, I'm drowning. I'm drowning. You're not drowning. It's just, they're fucking torturing you. Um, I would imagine if they do it enough, you know, you probably could drown mm -hmm. if they don't flip you back up. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I mean, that was around in the 17th century. So the CIA was just using something somebody else did. Um, they seem to like stuff like that where the psychological component comes into it to where you're, like you said, you, you, you can't see it coming. You feel it happening. Your breath is sort of disappearing for a moment, so you have this involuntary reaction to it. You can't stop yourself from doing it. So there is a that like your the fear in your mind at that point in time, the 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 notion of helplessness. You know, I mean. Well, that's another. So they they like noise and sleep deprivation. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, what about the water drip thing? What's 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 this? So I always thought that that was a Chinese water torture too, mm -hmm. where they just fucking drip water on you. Mm -hmm. And I don't know enough about it to say one way or mm -hmm. the other. I mean, if it's just drips of water, I'm pretty sure I can fucking hack that for a while. Well, one of the ones that I was listening to, um, they were talking about how they, when they do it to you for, for hours and hours and hours, there's no constant flow to when the drop comes. Like it's, it's sort of randomness. And so like you never can... Like, if you start to kind of, like, you're so exhausted. I mean, you just want to fucking fall asleep. You just want to, and, and it just, you know, and it just happens again. And it just resets. And then it resets. It's kind of like fucking The Walking Dead with Daryl and that stupid fucking song. Yeah. What's the song again? I don't know, dude. Come on, sing it, dude. <laughs> Something about being on Happy Fucking Street, Happy Street dude. That's right. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some some messed up stuff, and they do just they seem to recycle it. Of course, with the noise and stuff, you know, like for some reason the CIA always seems to play heavy metal. You know, back in medieval times, I'm not sure what they did. I don't think they'd bring a fucking string quartet or. <laughs> 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 Probably not. Yeah. Or maybe just a dude with a trumpet. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so Amnesty International, like I said, they said 141 countries are still actively engaged in torture. Um, I don't think that the United States is included in that 141, even though there are all these reports coming out of Guantanamo. Guantanamo and wherever in Iraq, how Afghanistan. Many, how many black sites did they close down when Obama came in? Because I thought it was big, twelve, right? Yeah, I think twelve was the number. Yeah, the number I remember too. But I mean, like, how, I mean, how the fuck do you? I mean, right? It's not like I mean that's why they call them black sites because nobody knows about them. You know, they also have a whole shitload of safe houses, and nobody knows about those. So it's not like we can go. Oh. Whew, 
all those black sites are closed now. Thank God. This is, this is your democracy, folks. No more enhanced interrogation techniques because the black sites are done. Um, but they actually, so June 26th, and I didn't know this, otherwise we probably could have waited until next year, but it's the International Day in Support of Torture Victims. So I guess June 26th of next year, if you know somebody who's been tortured, send them a fucking card or something. <laughs> you are you are really you, the, 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 the the delicate sensitivity that, that that guides your your suggestions and your actions, Brian. It's just sometimes it's hard to imagine anyone could ever be so thoughtful and feeling and so caring about an individual. I know that's why I'm saying to send them a card. I thought it was a nice gesture, just to remind everybody. Because this isn't just one of those random days like fucking Secretary's Day or whatever, Mother's Day, Father's Day. This is something, I think, probably more important. Um, so here's here's something that we didn't really talk about. Um, you know, so obviously you can beat somebody with fucking oranges or a telephone book and bruises don't show up. Still, beatings would be torture. Um, you know, batons and what, like, is it truncheons are, are still used. Those would okay. be the number one torture implement. Yeah, okay. like just a big stick with the, the kind of, they look almost decorative in a lot of ways. Um, My decorative torture stick. Yeah. But. I said that the crucifix was probably the most famous torture method. I think the rack's more famous. Do you? Yeah, I don't know. Nobody has pictures of a fucking rack in their house. Well, I just think about when people think of the rack, they think of the rack. When people think of the crucifixion, they don't think... They don't get a picture in their head of Jesus standing there and blood fucking like dripping off of his hands and. That's fair. Yeah. But I mean, I it, it, it's it, it it can go either way. I mean, it's not there is obviously. Well, the rack, and but, then you know, there's the stocks. The stocks are pretty famous too. What are, what's the stock? The stocks are the ones where the holes are cut out and your hands and your head go through. Yeah. Um, so that's on your knees or the stocks. And then if you're standing up with your heads and your, your head and your hands through the holes, then it's a pillory. That would be fucking exhausting. Dude. That was I would imagine that you'd end up breaking your neck yeah, depending on how long you were there. Um, but what I was getting at is that, is so, okay. There's famous, famous torture methods. Um, Iron Maiden is probably another one that's what, pretty what, famous. What, what, I mean, I, I but, think it seems like I've seen it. They, they shut you inside of it or something like yeah, that? Yeah, there's big-ass spikes coming from both the back and the front, uh -huh. and the idea is that when they close it, these spikes are just right there. So, so if you move, you're, you're getting pierced. And you're going to eventually move. Right. Because you're going to fall asleep yeah. or whatever. Um, but... You know, beatings are probably more, they happen more than the rack or, or anything, at least now. But throughout history, I think that rape is the most used. And, and in war, in prisons, in just any situation where torture would be applicable rape is, is something that they do. Um, I can't remember. I think it was Morocco or the Philippines might've been Nigeria or Uzbekistan, but one of those, and I apologize for not pinning it down, but um, the guards in this, this prison would force prisoners to rape other prisoners as as part of their punishment. I was talking about that Nazi lady beforehand. Her name was Ilsa Kak, and uh, they called her the witch. I can't I can't remember which uh, 
of the camp she was affiliated with. But uh, she did a lot of weird shit, dude. She'd like find people. She was obsessed with tattoos. She'd find people that have tattoos and then cut the tattoos off of them while they're alive and then fucking kill them. And then she'd make like fucking like uh, purses and lampshades out of them. I mean, she was a little bit loony. Um, but she was uh, she was like sex Texas stuff. Chainsaw. Yeah, but the sex stuff was her was her really her big thing. Like she beat pregnant women with a whip that had razors on it, uh, all up and down the whip. Uh, she beat children. Uh, she she was a weird sexual deviant. She'd organize these fucking Nazi orgies um, for fun, and then she would force the male prisoners to to rape the the females a ton. Uh, she was a fucking, when it came to sex, she'd like walk around with like, like, uh, she, so you got a 17 year old guy, like, and he's, he's in the camp, but you know, he's, he's dying. He still has a dick, you know? I mean, you, you you're not going to take away hormones even in the middle of a circumstance like that. So if the kid turned and looked at her, then she would just pop a cap in his ass. But like sex was like her major like framework for how she, and the tattoos, sex and tattoos. Well, and that's what I was going to say about the rape thing is that, you know, at least in war or maybe even rebellion, um, I think that they use rape as not only a fear mechanism, but they use it as a way to impregnate women so that you're now you're – and it's kind of you go I'll quote Braveheart again if you can't get them out we will breed them out yeah um and that's you know they did that what the fuck was it called um that's the problem in Scotland there's too many Scots when it was the first night that he granted so oh, whenever it's prima nocturna yeah um so they did shit like that Fairly often. Um, so they're just diluting the, the gene pool. Um, the Dark Ages must have sucked. Dude. I don't think it's just the Dark Ages, though. I mean, women are still talking about being raped in whatever war zone, you know. Um, in the 19- Chechnya. In the 1970s, it's a little like an apples and oranges thing, but it's still kind of like along the same like logic um in uh new zealand the maori were like a a woman get pregnant she'd have a kid and then she'd never be able to have a kid again and what they would do is that when she had her child they would go and tie her tubes and there was a whole generation i can't remember a mutual friend of ours uh, janae she told me i can't remember what the term was but it was basically that you didn't have any um no brothers and sisters for an entire generation, you know? Well, and they did something like that. Um, I don't know if they were doing that on purpose or not, but all of those prisoners here in the United States that volunteered, I think they got like two cartons of smokes or something to have radiation fucking injected into their balls. So essentially they were, you know, chemically castrating themselves Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's what the United States government had in mind when they were doing the study or if they were truly trying to study what happens when you inject radiation directly into somebody's balls. Or they figured they'd be killed two birds with one stone. Yeah, Yeah, both. When we're torturing, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. (laughs) We're good like that. And it wasn't torture, dude. It was a scientific study. On radiation and testicles. Thank you. Thank you uh, <laughs> uh, enhanced interrogation technique. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they are the, fucking dark motherfuckers. Dude. dude, the United States doesn't torture people. It just doesn't happen. Haven't you read a book or a fucking periodical any time in the last 20 years? We don't torture people. Doesn't happen. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> you know, um, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up something that I tend to bring up an awful lot. But uh, you're a Marxist. No, oh. Jul- Julian Assange in the in this case. But so ultimately, when when what happened with the the Sweden situation where he got pushed into the 
um, what was it, the Ecuadorian embassy in the UK. He was essentially stuck somewhere for seven years. That starts to fuck with you. But when they elected that new president and they pushed him out, I remember when they were throwing him in the fucking uh, back of that fucking van. Um, they had several, the UN's had several doctors go on and see him. And they, because you don't get, you don't get to see what they're really doing to him. And his brain is so fucked up. He's had a couple of mini strokes. Um, if he ever gets out of prison, he's not going to be a normal. I mean, and, and like the, the sad thing is, is aside from the fact that the guy showed the whole world everything that anybody had half a brain already already knew you know that that the way that the u.s was conducting itself in iraq was not okay and then all the other things the fact that he uh showed what a fucking uh cheater and jackass there a rod of clinton was uh unearthed the uh, cia's uh techniques for how they conducted their operations um well he didn't he made fucking enemies with everybody dude yeah you gotta love that but boy he's first of all if they get him to the U.S. through this, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Extradition. extradition. Yeah, if they get him through the, through the extradition. Um, this is one place where I'll acknowledge that something earlier I, I said earlier was incorrect. Um, there's no doubt that what's happening to Julian Assange is uh, everybody that functions as a journalist, is uh, they're acutely aware of what's happened to him. They, they understand that. You don't need to be a U.S. citizen to be charged with an es- with the Espionage Act, and if, if they want you, they're going to they come not, after you. They may not get you straight away, but they have the the, the these these powers of you know finance and, and military might, and uh, there's no doubt. Like like you said, the, the so in this case, the U.S. isn't conducting a. Uh, torture it's the uk that's doing it for us you know at that point in time so we we've got some juice in this country dude where you know lots of people bow down and and kiss our ass um but as as far as i'm concerned i don't know like okay so i've heard of like russian prisoners coming over here or people who were in prison in russia like in the gulag or whatever, mm-hmm. come over here and then end up in prison and they say, you know, it's like Club Med, fuck it, mm-hmm. I can do the time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, I've, I've never been to prison. I've been in a couple of city jails. I've been in county jail. I was in juvie for a weekend. Um, as far as I'm concerned, prison of any fucking state is torture. torture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would prefer to just have them kill me. Mm-hmm. Um because it's 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 all of it. It's the confinement. It's the you have to eat breakfast at seven o'clock. It's you can go out into the fucking yard for Two hours, and it, it's mandatory. It's not you can; it's yeah. you have to. Volition on any level is completely removed from the entire equation. Yeah, and I, I just, I can't deal with that. And people say, like, well, anybody that would prefer to die than do prison time is probably insane, so they shouldn't be able to, you know, plead their own case or or ask for that, but. As far as I'm concerned, that's bullshit, dude. <laughs> like, I am coherent, and I understand what it is I'm saying. Yeah. You know, maybe I could do a year, maybe two, anything longer than that. You need to fucking shoot me, fry me, give me some chemicals, whatever the case is. I don't, I don't want to go to jail because that's torture. No matter what anybody says. You like after you're not gonna be you're not gonna be the same. We had a mutual friend growing up. She spent seven years in uh, 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 Canyon City um, through the grace of uh, the former uh, crazy writer uh, Fair and Loathing in Las Vegas. Um, what's his name? Hunter. Hunter Thompson. S. Thompson. Hunter S. Thompson. Uh, they helped to get our friend Lisa out of prison, but uh, 
when I talk, and then I didn't, I, I, when, when you go, you, when you talk to somebody after they've been in a situation like that, you don't, you don't press, you let them set the boundaries of what they want to talk about because it is torture. And it, there is going to be, as a result, real trauma that's going to be uh, part of that person's existence for the rest of their life. But uh, she was talking to me about how, um, because you can't put your underwear into the laundry, uh, you have to wash your underwear in 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 the bathrooms or in the shower you know with with, with your with yourself because otherwise I mean, you might end up getting crabs yeah, or yeah, some uh, fucking nasty put, disease you, you just don't put shit in general <clears throat> top. but that thing in itself isn't the it's the whole the the way that you have to hardwire your mind to survive at a time period like that if you are going to make it past those two years because you are essentially a caged animal at that point you, you, you're you broken down to almost nothing. Well, and it's more than that. It's because, you know, now we've got these people who more than likely were fucking bullied in their They've got some sort of vendetta against people, you know, the guards. So now the guards are your enemies. But there is also the fact that basically every fucking person you meet is an enemy or at least has the capability to be. I mean, you got to watch your fucking back because you might get shanked. You might get your shit stolen. You might get raped. Any, any fucking thing. And that could happen again from a guard or another inmate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a, it's it's sad how and yes the, I mean when you talk about a, a prison industrial complex it's so so per- pervasive like I mean that's like yeah yeah you're you're it's like institution I guess if I mean if you look at it like prison is torture then that's like an institutional political economy of torture I mean I was thinking about more just in terms of when you originally said it the things that you buy and sell on the open market you know as weapons or non lethal weapons and all that shit but it's not it's it's those other institutions that you use. To make sure that people understand that uh, there's a certain dance that we we can do where we say this is this is freedom and this is democracy, but if you question that dance and you step outside of that dance too far, then uh, you're you know you are going to be sub you you're going to be subject to to situations like this that are torturous to be sure. And we're still, I mean, we're still building more prisons than we are schools. And that goes for, you know, public K-12 through higher ed. Um, California built, I think it was three times as many prisons as they did colleges between 1980 and 2010. I'll I'll look at those numbers again and correct myself on a, a future episode. But it's, it's something like that. It's fucking, it's bullshit. Um, and these people are tortured regardless of how nice they are treated while they're in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, maybe I'm just weak-minded. I don't know, but uh, I don't want to do mean, it. We, we, yeah, it's not uh, – no, it doesn't matter whether – I mean, my, my opinion of you is if you're in that situation, you're going to do what you can anyway unless you get to a, a, hit a breaking point. You know, like they talk about in Shawshank, everybody's got their breaking point, you know. Um, but – uh the point of it being institutionalized is like in the same way that like the Uyghurs in China are used as uh, like forced labor. I mean, they're essentially slaves and uh, they do some pretty awful fucking shit, shit to them. You know, if you, if you, uh, and I mean, that's just because they're this specific ethnic group that practices Islam, you know, they just, uh, and of course, like, we know that it happens, but we don't really know. To, to there was, I, I was looking at this one instance. There's a prison in Syria called uh, Saidnya. Oh S-A-Y-D-N-A-Y-A. yeah. S a y d n a y a. Both the Red Cross and Amnesty International are big fans of that prison. It's 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 a real, but the the so like you you have some like um, satellite photos, but when they reconstruct it, they've actually gone through this where the people that were ex uh, inhabitants of that place. Um, who have volunteered, they, they talk to them because they're trying to, like these people through through Amnesty and people through these UN spaces, they're, 
they're trying to get a better understanding of what it is that's, that's happening in those. Uh, and I mean, but it's, it's all again, it's under lock and key. You know, I mean, Guantanamo was public in, in the in the eye of everybody for whatever fucking reason. I don't know, but like the black sites, like we we don't know. Then the prisons, like we don't like Supermax, like. You really think you know what fucking goes on in Supermax? No, you you, you, you don't. Because most people that go to Supermax, it, it, it's it's you go you you don't go out, you know, except for in a body bag. No, know? and that's what. But I mean, so that's that is definitely a prison I couldn't handle either. But that's you know, twenty three hours in, one hour out, and you're by yourself. All the time, because they don't want you. I mean, the windows in most of them are fucking slanted to where you can't see trees or fucking houses or anything else. Yeah, I mean, so you might be protected from everyone except the guards. But now you are just in complete fucking isolation. Except for 365 hours a year. We're social beings. I mean, we we need to have, and that's when they talk about Assange's situations, a lot of that, the way they play these psychological games, some stuff you mentioned, I think that there was some stuff they were talking about, music that they would play, uh, fucking with your sleeping habits, you know. Um, The movie Bridge of Spies, uh, when they were talking about what had happened to Gary Powers when he was, after his plane got shot down, the music thing was a huge part of, you know, and letting a person fall asleep and then throwing fucking water on them, you know. I mean, it's not always about peeling back skin, you know. Sometimes it's just about these, like, exhaustion, like, is a killer. I mean, when you cannot ever rest, you know, when you cannot ever just be. And take that from someone that only sleeps two hours a day or three, maybe. Unless I'm on drugs. And then maybe more. Four. Five. Yes, exhaustion sucks. <laughs> I feel like dude on Fight Club. What are you, what do you, what do you, like, what would be your worst nightmare? Like, as far as, like, if, if you were in a situation like that. Dude, I don't know. Like, so, you know that that weird outdoor prison that uh, Christian Bale was in, in, uh, I can't, in the dark night. He was like up on a mountain with, I, I actually okay. never see the dark night. But. So something outdoor like that, like, you know, maybe one of those Vietnamese camps or something like that. I think I could handle better because That's I would awful. think somewhere in my head, I've got a better chance of escape. But being in a fucking 10 by 10 concrete cell, 23 hours a day, I just, I don't think I can do it, dude. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you could escape a Vietnamese prison. You, you, the white guy runs out in the middle of Vietnam. Nobody right. ever find him. You know, you look, you, you have a little bit of Vietnamese in your look. You yeah, know? I know. I, I definitely look, and, and Nobody my Vietnamese, my not, and I would just uh, order bond me's a lot and i blend right in dude and if you say no my my then you're telling them to fuck their mother come on thank you you know that's the extent of my vietnamese all i can only <laughs> i can only say thank you for fucking your mother all right we're coming up on 50 minutes <laughs> you want to close it out with what your nightmare would be uh, i mean i think uh, one thing i mean the Extreme heat, extreme cold, like the the, the bull. I, I hate the thought of that. Being buried alive, actually, I think, is something that uh, the, the claustrophobia of that moment. The only like saving grace is that you you're gonna run out of air fairly quickly. So, but I mean, even still, like the the scariest thing about torture is that uh, the people that are really good at fucking they you make sure you to over, keep you alive. Yeah, they, and they know they know how to they know things about you that you don't necessarily know. Janae was talking about it when she's in Lebanon. Um, so, like, because they don't have a lot of energy, you don't got a lot of AC, you don't got uh, heat, right? So they have their windows open at the the um, the race for fire. They would th- no, they would uh, go like outside the windows and throw uh, little glow sticks. And I mean, that was just a way to let them know I can kill you at any fucking time. Right, I'm right here. You know, I mean. 
and that uh, uh, now now we're totally fucked this week. I talk I talk shit about Julian Assange, and I brought up Israel. You know that's 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 surefire fucking uh, Maryland Virginia situation. So. <laughs> that's it i just don't want to get really don't want to get buried alive all right happy days all um just you people that are listening in maryland and virginia he was just joking about being buried alive that doesn't bother him at all <laughs> and i don't mind going to prison either yeah it made me alive all right don't throw me in the briar patch bitches Seven two zero three three four. roll we'll see you later